uh, I will be talking about uh, hydrogel grafted responsive membranes uh, process using XML laser. Uh, so uh, first, I, uh, let me uh, give uh, an overview of my presentation. Uh, we have developed a fast method for fabrication of stimuli-responsive membranes. We used a krypton fluoride uh, a pulsed eczema laser uh, as a tool for both uh, creation of regular, well-defined and ordered pores uh, created uh, in support membranes, and also grafting of stimuli-responsive transport media in these pores. We optimized uh, uh, the uh, uh, pulse laser polymerization method, PLP, uh, for grafting uh, uh, hydrogel material uh, in these pores uh, to achieve controlled transport rates uh, through these uh, pores. Our uh, method uh, is a, uh, involves two steps. Uh, it's a novel method, uh, different than the uh, currently uh, applied uh, procedures. Uh, it involves, uh, first of all, uh, uh, use of a uh, support membrane I will give you examples of PI, polyimide, or polyethylene terapethylate, PET films uh, today. Uh, we perforate uh, these uh, films by using uh, eczema laser uh, by ablation. So for this purpose, we use 248 nanometer krypton fluoride uh, laser. The uh, process parameters uh, for the laser are fluence, number of pulses, and frequency. So by, uh, uh, by this uh, ablation, uh, you can see here uh, a very well uh, orderly, a well-behaved uh, uh, pore structure is obtained in a macro size. So we have a macro pore morphology created in this manner. In the second step, uh, we again use the same uh, eczema laser. Uh, in this case for PLP, uh, for uh, pore grafting uh, of, of, of uh, hydrogel material, which will be our responsive uh, tool uh, for the uh, gating uh, membrane. Again, the process variables involve laser parameters, as well as the grafted uh, hydrogel uh, uh, properties uh, involving the monomer used, the cross-linker, and the initiator uh, used in this case. Uh, this way, we are uh, uh, converting our macropore morphology that we created by the first step to a micropore uh, morphology, uh, which is within the hydrogel, uh, which is cross-linked and uh, offers a tortuous uh, path. So uh, in this manner, uh, for example, by using isopropyl acrylamide or P-NIPAM, uh, you can see on the right here, uh, if you uh, plot the uh, permeability coefficient versus number of pulses, uh, we can obtain uh, a six order of magnitude variation uh, uh, in the permeability coefficient. So that's a, uh, a very good result. Uh, furthermore, we have achieved uh, controlled solute transport. So the transport uh, can be a linear uh, transport uh, mode as uh, can be seen on these lower lines, or we can go up to a Fickian uh, 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 transport, whereby we reach a constant per, uh, uh, transport rate, uh, which is uh, really important for medical applications where we would like to uh, uh, gate uh, to a, uh, uh, a fixed uh, uh, a transport rate at a certain time. Now for the uh, membranes currently used, these unfortunately uh, lack defined geometry, order and regularity. Uh, they involve electro spinning, track etch etching, film stretching, interfacial polymerization, and phase inversion. Our method, however, uh, is, uh, produces ordered, regular, and well-defined pores. Therefore, we can uh, create uh, stimuli-responsive transport media uh, for controlled transport. The advantage of this is that we can use well-established physical laws and models uh, first of all, to design our membranes and then to tune them for a specific uh, application. Mm -hmm. So in this case, uh, we are applying Haugen Poissel uh, equation to calculate the volumetric flow rate 
uh, and we are using the equation corresponding to a non-circular tube, since we are to, uh, our pores are uh, rectangular in cross-section. And the uh, permeability coefficient then can be calculated by using this uh, volumetric flow rate uh, divided by the perforated area times the, uh, uh, the uh, pressure uh, applied. So uh, if we define pore density as the uh, ratio of number of pores divided by the perforated area, then we can write the permeation coefficient as shown here on the right-hand side in terms of geometrical and material properties. Now, this uh, permeation uh, constant is then normalized first with respect to geometrical parameters to render, render it independent of these parameters to get a, uh, a, a normalized uh, constant. And then uh, furthermore, we no normalize that value by multiplying with the viscosity of the solute since this, the viscosity is a function of temperature. And especially if you are using you know, temperature dependent uh, uh, gating, then this will be necessary. The first step uh, involving uh, ablation is uh, accomplished by using our pulse excimer laser. This is a method that has been applied for a long time and we have used it also in the past uh, for many other applications. The, this ablation uh, is governed by Beer's law, as you may already know. Uh, which tells us that the change in the fluence uh, when we irradiate a, a polymer film is given by the inverse of the effective absorption coefficient multiply, multiplied by the natural logarithm of the fluence, incoming fluence, divided by the threshold uh, uh, fluence. For example, for the PET membrane, the ablation threshold is about 30 millijoule per square centimeter. So we are using an LPX 240i krypton uh, excimer laser, and we are using krypton fluoride uh, lasing gas in this instrument. Uh, we can change it, of course, to change the wavelength. With uh, krypton fluoride, we get 248 nanometer wavelength, and uh, we use the instrument at a high constant voltage of 26 uh, kilovolts. We used uh, for the PET uh, films, we used four different film thicknesses to see the effect of the uh, film th membrane thickness, varying from 50 to 125 micron. We also used uh, uh, a steel mesh uh, as a mask for the lithographic uh, procedure in the ablation. Uh, and that uh, provided us with the pore sizes varying from 43 micron to 20 micron. The operational parameters are fluence uh, designated by cap F, uh, number of pulses cap P, and laser frequency small f. The schematic of the ablation procedure is shown here. Uh, the incoming uh, laser light uh, passes through a lens of focal length five centimeters and hits the uh, uh, mask, the mesh mask, uh, under which we have our film. Uh, and we use a vacuum pump uh, to evacuate the uh, ablation products. Uh, so this gives us a very nice orderly uh, distributed uh, pores, as you can see here in 3D uh, kind of uh, picture. Uh, and uh, the uh, mask provides us with an ablated area of four millimeter in diameter, uh, which is equal to the size of our filtration uh, cell. The, uh, the, the ablated films are then uh, uh, cleaned uh, and uh, pictures of the, uh, surf of the pores are taken by optical microscopy to be able to calculate the pore size uh, by using image analysis. If you look at uh, our results, uh, uh, we can see that initially as we increase the pulse uh, numbers, uh, the uh, pore uh, uh, affected size or uh, irrad irradiated si uh, area increases until we have a pore opening. Once the pore opens, obviously, we do not have any uh, more change uh, with increasing number of pulses uh, where we reach this plateau. Uh, so uh, 
in this case, of course, uh, the fluent and, uh, and the uh, perforated area are also uh, affecting our uh, energy uh, delivery. So we can calculate the lowest energy for pore opening as fluence times the number of pulses times the perforated area. So uh, when we plot the lowest uh, energy level uh, for pore opening versus thickness, our results show us, uh, tell us that we more or less get a, a, a linear variation increasing with the thickness of the film. We also know that the final average pore size increases as the fr uh, fluence increases. We also see an effect of the mesh size, uh, our steel mesh uh, that we use for mask. Uh, what happens is that larger mesh openings result in larger average pore sizes. And it also gives us cleaner edges, more uniform shape and well-defined pores. We also get smaller affected area, uh, uh, heat affected area, which is manifested by these dark areas around the pores. So it's better to use a larger mesh opening. And this we think is created by the interaction of the incoming uh, laser beam uh, with the steel wire, uh, which uh, reflects and refracts uh, to a certain degree the incoming uh, light. You can see how the mesh sizes uh, correspond to mesh openings and resulting uh, pore or open uh, diameters. And this is uh, plotted, uh, uh, listed here for four different uh, membrane uh, thicknesses. We are using a frequency of one hertz for our ablation uh, portion. The dependence on the mesh size is also valid uh, in the same manner for the polyimid uh, films, except the uh, heat affected zone uh, uh, effect is uh, less uh, prominent because of the more, uh, higher robustness of the PI due to the presence of these aromatic uh, groups. Uh, but uh, overall, like here we have results for 25 micron thick membrane, again, ablated at one Hertz. Uh, the larger uh, pore, uh, uh, mesh opening gives us better results. Now as for grafting, let me first uh, talk about P and IPAM grafting. Uh, we use, again, the same excimer laser for this purpose. Uh, the thermal gating material is isopropyl acrylamide, uh, NIPAM. The cross-linking material is MBAM, uh, methylene uh, bisacrylamide. The uh, initiator is IRGACURE. And the PLP, the pulse laser polymerization, is quenched uh, by using hydroquinone. This material, uh, the uh, PNIPAM, has a lower critical uh, solution temperature, LCST. So below the LCST, the material is in more random state where end-to-end -end, uh, distance is much larger. So in this case, we have a, a swollen state where the transmission rate uh, drops down because uh, in this uh, swollen state, uh, the, uh, the pore is uh, more constricted. Above the LCSD, uh, the uh, molecules uh, uh, de-swell, uh, acquire this uh, uh, globular uh, uh, shape with, the, uh, with a smaller end-to-end uh, -end, uh, distance. So we have therefore uh, open pore, more open pores with higher transmission rates. For the experimental portion uh, here, uh, the schematic is shown uh, in the middle here. Again, we have the light coming through this lens and hitting this grafting chamber, uh, which is sealed. The light goes through a quartz uh, window uh, in which we have our ablated films uh, sitting. Underneath of that, uh, we have the grafting solution, uh, so which is polymerized PLP uh, bottom up. And for all these uh, cases, the grafting solution is bubbled or purged with nitrogen to remove oxygen. The uh, grafting uh, was uh, uh, confirmed uh, subsequent to this grafting procedure by using ATR, FTIR. We also have uh, a good uh, anchoring of the grafted uh, molecule on the pore walls because when we use uh, infiltration, uh, fairly high pressures, 
the hydrogel uh, remains uh, anchored in the pores and does not uh, break apart or flow out. <clears throat> we know that uh, the uh, characteristic chain length is proportional to the dark time, which we uh, have during the pulse irradiation of our uh, membranes. So uh, that is inversely proportional to frequency, which means that uh, as we increase the frequency, the characteristic chain length will decrease. This, of course, will reduce the process time, which is good. And in fact, I, I must uh, emphasize that our method is, is very short in the, a matter of seconds. It's an ultra short uh, 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 process compared to the other processes that are being used. And uh, so that's even further increased by increasing the frequency, but also uh, uh, we note that uh, by increasing the frequency, the, the uh, density of the, uh, the, the uh, length of the uh, polymer uh, decreases. So we obtain a denser, more compact uh, uh, graft inside the pores. So in this case, the transmission rates are reduced. This is similar to, by, uh, to the increase of uh, pulse numbers, which increases the cross-link density. And if we increase the cross-link density, again, the transmission rate uh, is reduced. So that's uh, an area that uh, we need to pay attention to. Now, as I mentioned, uh, as far as the mechanism is concerned, below the LCST, the dominant H bonding is obtained between the P-NIPAM and water. So we obtain a random coil uh, with a, a longer end-to-end -end distance. Above the LCST, uh, intramolecular H bonding be uh, occurs between P and IPAM chains, and we obtain this uh, compact spherical glo glo globule, which uh, uh, allows uh, higher transmission rates. So as I mentioned, the degree of cross-linking uh, does have an effect on the transmission rates. We can control that by either the uh, percentage uh, of the cross-linker uh, so, uh, in the solution or by number of pulses. So if we want lower cross-link network, we need to use either lower percentage of cross-linker or lower number of uh, pulses. So this is uh, true for both the uh, PET and PI. Now, for the uh, grafting of the, uh, uh, of the uh, PI membranes for pH responsiveness, in this case, we use polyacrylic uh, acid, uh, PAAC. Crosslinker and initiator are the same as uh, P9PAM. Now, uh, the uh, grafting uh, is again, uh, very uh, effective. You can see here from this picture, very nice and uniform grafting, uh, secure inside the pores. And when we look at the perme uh, permeation uh, coefficient, we notice that with the uh, acrylic acid, uh, we had a high uh, permeation uh, coefficient at low, uh, low pH levels. Uh, so uh, this, was, this uh, uh, corresponded to the swelling of the PAAC. And what happened here was uh, that the carboxylic groups are protonated at low pH, which leads to intermolecular hydrogen bonding that leads to the swelling of the uh, polymer. However, if we, as we increase the uh, pH and reach the seven, uh, then uh, the permeability coefficient drop down. So uh, here, uh, what is, what's happening is uh, the uh, uh, hydrogel is swelling uh, as uh, uh, represented here uh, at a higher pH and carboxylic groups dissociate uh, in the polymer chain causing swelling. So we have the gating uh, function uh, achieved uh, in this manner. The degree of cross-linking effect in this case is similar to what I described with P9PAM. Uh, so again, we have to control the cross-linker uh, percentage and the number of pulses. Here, I'm showing the results in terms of diffusion coefficient uh, through the uh, uh, polyacrylic uh, acid. So what, uh, what we are doing here is, uh, uh, rather than just running water through, the, uh, through these pores, 
uh, we have actually included uh, co uh, small caffeine molecules to illustrate the diffusion of small molecules and their, the, the control of their diffusion through our membranes. So the uh, caffeine molecules are about 3.8 angstrom in size uh, and their diffusion rate uh, is controlled uh, through the pH. In this case, uh, the diffusion coefficients uh, can be calculated by using fixed first law of diffusion, whereby we have the natural logarithm of the difference of uh, uh, concentrations is equal to the diffusion coefficient times a, a volume term uh, times the effective area of the membrane divided by the membrane uh, thickness times time. Now, the uh, self-diffusion coefficient of this uh, uh, molecule, the caffeine molecule, uh, shown here on the lower right, uh, can be uh, calculated, uh, and we calculate that, that to be 6.11 times 10 to the minus uh, 9 uh, square meter per second. Uh, the self-diffusion coefficient is given here. When we take the ratio with the diffusion, uh, fixed diffusion coefficient, we get the obstruction uh, constant. <clears throat> now, uh, to uh, talk a little bit about water permeation, uh, when we ablate the film, uh, we op uh, obtain a, a typical representative uh, uh, pore diameter. Here I'm de describing the pore uh, with a more conical shape. Uh, to uh, re uh, reflect the reality a little bit more. And this is because uh, this is typical of uh, laser ablation, whereby because of the, again, reflection and refraction from the surfaces, and because of the uh, it being an initial contact point with the light, uh, the top portion uh, of the membrane, which is ex exposed to the incoming uh, beam, uh, ends up to be a little bit larger in diameter than the bottom. And then we, of course, graft this with the hydrogel. Uh, and uh, what we can do here is we can calculate an equivalent pore size uh, by back calculating from the Hagen Poiseuille equation. So we have this phi sub g, uh, which is the equivalent pore size. And by dividing that with the nominal pore diameter and taking the square, we get the porosity. Why do we have this uh, equivalent pore size? Because of the tortuosity. When we fill the pore, <clears throat> due to the cross-linked nature of the uh, polymer, uh, the tortuous length through which the molecules have to go, uh, travel through is much longer than the nominal uh, length of the pore, which is uh, uh, approximately the same as the membrane thickness. So we end up with this tortuosity, which is the ratio of dx to d. So therefore, uh, the porosity will be affected obviously by the cross link density, as I mentioned, uh, or the frequency, et cetera, of the, of the grafting. So if you look at the <clears throat> results, first as a function, this is for PET, uh, P9PM. Uh, we can see that uh, for different thicknesses, again, we are looking at the pore filled uh, uh, membranes. And as we plot the porosity versus thickness, we have this uh, 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 slight decrease, as we would expect, uh, of the porosity. But more importantly, you can see as we increase the number of pulses, uh, the, the higher the number of pulses, the smaller is the porosity. This lowest uh, uh, line here uh, corresponds to uh, 900 uh, pulses. The top one is uh, 300, 600, and 900. And why is that? Because with 900 uh, pulses, we obtain a denser uh, graft, uh, which uh, hinders the transmission uh, more effectively. Now, as far as the water permeation experiments are concerned, uh, we are using uh, a dead end cell, uh, permeation cell, which is shown here. And the solute uh, is coming through that cell and we measure the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, material coming out uh, and plot the uh, mass versus uh, time uh, in this plot. So therefore that mass calculated 
uh, can be used to obtain the permeability coefficient. So that is the purpose of the, uh, uh, this filtration cell. Uh, and then remember that uh, this permeation coefficient uh, can be, uh, should be uh, normalized first with respect to the uh, geometric and material properties. Well, first with the geometric properties and secondly with uh, material properties. So when we uh, uh, plot our results uh, as a function of thickness, you can see here on the left below the, this is for with P and IPAM, uh, below the LCST, you can see that the normalized permeation coefficient goes down with thickness. And it's affected also by uh, the uh, numbers of pulses. And above the LCST, again, it's going down with the uh, increase in thickness. Another thing that we uh, notice here is that above the LCST, this family of curves shift up, meaning that the permeability is increasing due to the deswelling of the hydrogen gel. Now, if we just look at the uh, values uh, uh, below and above the LCST at different uh, pulse numbers, 300, 600, and 900, even though we see differences, uh, the thermal gating effect on all of them, this effect is most prominent at the highest number of pulses you can see here. And if we take the difference here and, and obtain the percent increment and plot it versus the thickness of the membrane, you can see this monotonic increase, uh, very prominent uh, with thickness. So we can therefore tell, uh, even though we have some increase with the lower number of pulses, we have some uh, variability here, which means that uh, maybe the results may not be as dependable. But if you use higher pulse numbers, uh, and at uh, thicker membranes, we obtain more stable and prominent temperature response. Well, that was very clearly observed. So in conclusion, I can say that uh, we, we developed a simple method to fabricate regular, well-defined and ordered pores. We obtained the conditions uh, for a wide range of pore sizes in uh, support membranes and established the versatility of krypton fluoride eczema laser is a tool for both ablation and grafting in fabricating these uh, ultra-fast uh, uh, fabricated uh, membranes. We optimize pore grafting to achieve controlled transport rates across the LCST of p nipam as well as for the pH, T, pH uh, threshold of PAAC. And we believe that this method can be applicable for other types of hydrogels for other stimuli responsive membranes. Our, as far as the experimental results are concerned, uh, we uh, again illustrated the applicability of the laser ablation, uh, which uh, turned out to be similar for various thicknesses. And grafting uh, was very early, uh, uh, revealing for PLP. We showed that permeation drops with thickness, as I just showed. And we noticed that the PET film thicknesses has little or no effect on pulse laser polymerization mechanism. And under higher uh, pulse numbers, as I showed uh, on my uh, last slide, the effect of thickness on temperature response was prominent. <clears throat> Even though I didn't show data or go into detail because of the uh, limitation of time, I also mentioned that we immobilized glucose oxidase on our pH responsive uh, PI, PAC uh, gating membranes. Uh, Glucose oxidase or GOD enzyme was immobilized on the membrane using, uh, using carbodiimide based amidation method. And the poly uh, polyacrylic acid grafted in these uh, pores shows uh, pH responsive gating. The immobilized GOD molecules showed glu glucose sensitivity and converted the glucose into gluconic acid. Our experimental results show that these membranes can detect the amount of glucose and release uh, uh, of it uh, for, uh, the in the corresponding solute amount. Uh, we have published our results so far uh, in uh, four different papers, uh, two in Journal of Membrane Science, one in ACS Applied Materials and Interfaces, and one in a European Polymer uh, Journal with my uh, co-authors, which are listed here. Uh, I thank you for your attention and my email and phone number are shown here. Uh, if you would like to contact me for uh, further interaction. Thank you very much.